All right, welcome back. We are going to work out uh, what sine and cosine give you for a sum of two angles. So that is sine of alpha plus beta and cosine of alpha plus beta. And if you haven't tried number seven on the handout yet, please do so. Have a try yourself before watching me do it because you learn more doing it yourself than watching me do it. Uh, so, if you get stuck, then unpause this video and we'll see what we can do. All right, so here's the, uh, here's the diagram where all of the angles are variables instead of actual measurements. Uh, also, I've labeled uh, some of the sides of these triangles with the same names as in previous diagrams. Okay, so let's start with sine of A. Sine of A, that's going to be this, I'm sorry, not sine of A, sine of alpha plus beta is going to be the Y coordinate of this point A. So this measurement is going to be sine of alpha plus beta. Okay, and this right-hand diagonal side, that's sine of beta, because we have a right triangle here with hypotenuse 1, and the angle down here is beta. Also, this sort of intermediate diagonal side that's bold, this is cosine beta, and that's because in the same right triangle, the angle is beta, the hypotenuse is 1, and this bolded bottom side is, is the adjacent side, so that's cosine beta. Okay, so now let's see if we can figure out D, uh, C, D, E, and F. Fortunately, all of these work out exactly the same as they did when we had uh, actual uh, numbers for our angles. So let's start with C. So we have this right triangle with alpha in the lower left, and C is opposite, so we should be using sine. So let's see, let's, yeah, let's do this here, I guess. Sine of alpha is the opposite side, which is C, over the adjacent side, which is cosine beta. And then Clear your denominator by multiplying by cosine. So cosine beta and cosine beta on the right hand side. On the right hand side, the cosine betas cancel, and we get C equals. Uh, I'm going to switch these two sine alpha times cosine beta. Okay, so now we know C. Next, we'll find D. D, remember, is this vertical blue distance. So in this upper right triangle, D is adjacent to alpha, so we have to use cosine. So cosine of alpha is the adjacent side D over the hypotenuse sine beta. As before, multiply both sides by sine beta. And now we know D. D is sine beta cosine alpha. And actually, I probably want that the other way. It doesn't really matter, but it's nice to have them arranged so that the alpha comes first. So cosine alpha times sine beta equals D. Okay, and just like before, when we had actual numbers for our angles, uh, sine of alpha plus beta is just C plus D on the diagram, and that is, C up here is sine alpha times cosine beta 
plus, and now d is right here, cosine alpha times sine of beta. All right, not too bad. So finding cosine of alpha plus beta is very similar to this, which with the same caveat uh, as in the last video. There's a little bit that's different. Uh, so try your hand at finding cosine of alpha plus beta. Pause the video and give it a shot. And uh, if you get stuck, start the video and we will work it out together. And we're back. Uh, so to find cosine of alpha plus beta, cosine is an x-coordinate, so let's identify which horizontal distance is cosine of alpha plus beta. Alpha plus beta put you up at this point A, and so cosine of alpha plus beta is going to be the x-coordinate of that point. That's this green distance here. So that's cosine alpha plus beta. And cosine of alpha plus beta, this green distance, is this red distance, which is E, horizontal red distance, minus this horizontal blue distance, which is labeled F. Okay, so let's use these right triangles to get equations with E and F in them. Let me give myself a little room here. Okay. So working with the bottom right triangle, E is adjacent to the angle alpha, so we should use cosine. So cosine of alpha is the adjacent side, which is E, over the hypotenuse, which is still cosine beta. Okay, and then looking at the upper right triangle, you can see most of it here. Looking at the upper right triangle, uh, we need to use sine of alpha because we are trying to find f, which is the side opposite alpha in this upper triangle. So sine alpha equals the opposite side f over the hypotenuse, and the hypotenuse is still sine beta. Okay, now we have our equations. Let's scroll down a bit. Now let's solve both of these equations for the unknown sides. On our cosine equation, we need to multiply by cosine beta to clear the denominator on the right-hand side. And this gives us, on the right-hand side, E. And on the left-hand side, cosine alpha, cosine beta. I switched the order again so that I have the alpha coming first. On our sine equation, we can multiply both sides by sine beta. And on the right hand side, the sine betas cancel. And we get f equals sine alpha times oops, sine beta. Okay, And if you look at this diagram, just like in the last video, cosine alpha plus beta, the green distance we want, is E, the red distance, minus F, the blue distance. So cosine alpha plus beta, let me keep the diagram in the frame, cosine alpha plus beta is E minus F, and that is, from E, it's cosine alpha, cosine beta, minus F, which is sine alpha, sine beta. So looking at these two equations, this one for sine, oops, <laughs> and this one for cosine, These two equations give us a way of writing sine and cosine of a sum in terms of sine and cosine of the original angles. Uh, these two are called the sum formulas for sine and cosine, rather creatively. And we can use them uh, to 
for lots of things, uh, just as an example, you can use them to get exact values of sine and cosine for some new angles that aren't the ang nice angles that we're used to. So go ahead and use the addition formula for sine and cosine to find the exact values for sine and cosine on the uh, last page of the worksheet.